Do you suffer with saddle sores while cycling? Matt's gonna give us some tips and tricks on how you can help prevent that. Some of you might actually recognize me from quite a long time ago. Matt's been looking after myself and my sister for the last number of years, along with a number of World Tour pros, so I wouldn't trust anyone else with my bike fit. Four years ago when we did a bike fit series yeah. at Rafa in Manchester, and um, we're now in my new studio space on the ground floor in, in Rafa. Today's topic of conversation was saddle sores. So saddle sores develop because of two things. First is pressure and the next thing is friction. Those two parts really combine to create sores. How can we prevent them and um, improve saddle pressure? Well, really there's a few key take homes here. The bike fit's absolutely crucial. You might have a really good saddle, but if the bike isn't set up correctly, uh, you could be trying various different saddles. And if you're constantly trying different saddles and the bike fits a long way off, it's never gonna perform very well. So first real take home is senior professional for a bike fit is key, of course, I'm gonna say that. You know, <laughs> this is what I do for a living. Thinking about how the bicycle's set up, right? So forget about the saddle just for a second. What I generally see in the studio is clients that come in with chronic saddle sores, generally, and this is a generalization, but their saddles are often way too high. So the saddle height is too high, which again, kind of increases that pressure through the saddle. Um, and yeah, something that's quite easy to fix. Yeah. So setting up the saddle height correctly, um, and, and just a very easy take home for viewers here. If you measure your inseam and then deduct 100 millimeters off that, just giving you a, a very rough start position for your saddle height yeah. um, just might help you in the process of reducing sores. Where you actually sat on the saddle. So think about your sit bones, you know, the anchors that can take pressure through the saddle. So sit bones, your ischial tuberosities, big parts of your pelvis here and that's what we're looking to to engage on a saddle so where you're sat on the saddle is key so thinking about that on the next ride you do engaging those sit bones if the saddle that you're currently using doesn't actually allow you to do that very well just think about the saddle actually can we change to something that engages the sit bones a bit better yeah and um, so super narrow saddles um, often, you know, perhaps not the best choice for clients that are suffering with sores around the pubic rami and soft tissue area. Saddle shape and design as well, right? Finding the right saddle for you. And fortunately, there's, there's, there's not, no golden ticket here. I say this to clients that come in the studio, but it varies for everyone. Um, so it's a case of trial and error really, finding a shape and design that suits you and suits your riding position. Um, but again, it's finding a saddle that doesn't catch you in any area. So yeah. um, thinking about pressure through the saddle again, wanting to engage those sit bones. Actually, are you using a saddle that, that allows you to, to do that? Um, or do you find the saddle is too wide in certain areas when you do come back and sit on those sit bones? Do you feel like the reach is too long to your gear shifters, your brakes? Well, if you think that that might be the case, then perhaps just think about maybe a combination of reducing the saddle setback, but also reducing the reach might just help keep you at the back of the saddle again. Because I mentioned earlier, the further forward that you sit, the more pressure through that soft tissue and the pubic rami. So again, that pressure and friction is the main reason why you're getting saddle sores. So just to finish this very quick conversation on improving saddle pressure, um, I'm a really big advocate of saddles with cutouts. So a cutout is something like this really, saddle with a big large cutout through the center of it. And that really does help reduce pressure on your soft tissue. Yeah. So Forget about the saddle sores for a second. If you experience high amounts of pressure on your soft tissue, that can be pretty concerning sometimes. It might may lead to numbness um, and a lack of comfort when you're out cycling. So saddles with cutouts, they're there for a reason. They're there to take pressure off the perineal nerve, uh, which if it's crushed for a prolonged period of time, can lead to that numbness and discomfort. So again, if you're thinking about changing the saddle you're currently using, and maybe just have a look at some options with 
with clear cutouts, quite sizable and extend almost the full duration of the saddle. Big fan of the Selle Italia SLR saddles and some of the San Marco short fits also work really well. But yeah, there's plenty of options out on the market now. Um, the saddle design is, is, is constantly changing and improving. So yeah, of course, any further issues, go and see your, uh, your local bike fitter that, that can uh, help facilitate you along this journey and, and make sure you do your research with who you go and see as well. I hope that helps some of you out. All of Matt's details can be found in the description down below. And if you have any burning questions that you'd love to ask a qualified bike fitter, leave them down below and I'll put them to Matt in the next video. First race of the season tomorrow. So I'll see you then.